and you have storage under the bed as well as behind the back seats. But there's tons of storage. It's comfortable. This is a comfortable setup. <laughs> okay, this is our second camper van video. Actually, this is the first configuration that we did, first trying to figure out how we were going to set up a bed in the van. So we're going to show you how we did that. But to find out how we really use the van mostly, check out our other video. So you can see that we removed the middle seats of the camper van. Okay, so what I have here are some pieces from some plastic shelving that you can get at probably almost any hardware store like Home Depot, Lowe's, or maybe a local place that you have. This is a much cheaper option than trying to get something custom built just for your van. It comes in and out easily. And when you reassemble it back in your home or garage or wherever you're storing it, you can keep your camping stuff right on these shelves. Okay, so I've gone ahead and pre-cut the legs to the size that we need. And what we were thinking when we did this is that the van angles downward naturally because of the suspension. Okay, so now I'm going to assemble my shelves and show you where we set them. the legs just to the midline of the car and it lines up just to the inside of the track for the seat. And again, just to the midline of the van on the inside and just inside the track on the outside. So you'll see this is pretty stable as is. If you're worried about having additional stability, you could zip tie these together and that would give you additional stability. You'll also notice that these shelving systems are already perforated, if you will. There's plenty of airflow. I know van lifers sometimes can worry about humidity and mold, so this will help with that problem, especially if you're keeping your mattress in here for long terms. So this is the next piece of this project. This was originally a 4x8 sheet of plywood that we had cut down to 32 and 3 quarter inches. So it's still 4 feet in this direction, which will be the width of your van, 32, three quarter inches this way. So you see on the back seat, we have a blanket. We have this there to serve two purposes. One, it comes over the edge and protects the seat from where I'm about to put this plywood. And two, I have the rest rolled up here in the crease and just gives the back side of the plywood a little bit more support. This is where ultimately your pillows and your head is gonna go. Okay, so now I have my plywood in. All I need to do is put my legs, which I've pre-cut to, I don't know. <laughs> Maggie you can cut this bit out. I've cut some PVC legs to 13 and a quarter. Two of them, those would be my outside legs. My inside leg is a little bit shorter. It is roughly 12 and three quarters, maybe 12 and seven eighths. This is the one of the longer legs. Okay, in order to get this mattress to sit flat, you do have to move the seats up. Okay, so you can see that this offers plenty of room for you to lay down still. You could even probably sit up depending on how tall you are. Uh, you can sit on the edge of the bed and still have place to put your feet at the bottom. And you have storage under the bed as well as behind the back seats. So an obvious benefit to this setup besides the storage is that we still have a row of seats in the back of the van. We can we can carry three more people in addition to the two in the front. And you're probably wondering, how do you do that? You have a bed laying across it. So I'm gonna show you how we can do that right now. And it actually makes for a nifty little table surface if you wanted to sit back there and eat if it's raining while you're camping or you wanted to play a game or anything like that. So this is how I might set this up if I needed a table or if I had passengers and we needed some kind of surface. But if we were driving, I wouldn't leave this loose tabletop here with passengers in the back just for safety reasons. I would either put this on the floor or at least under the mattress to keep it more secure. Can you sit up? Kind of. But I can definitely like roll over and stuff. But there's tons of storage. It's comfortable. This is a comfortable setup. So we don't use this setup, but I wanted to take a second just to show you a possible third option if you didn't want to keep the back seats in. The first two panels are cut to the length that we wanted to match the seat. You could either have those longer or shorter. We cut the legs, so it could be as much as this much higher for this particular set of shelves. If you wanted to, you could keep all four shelves the same 
and then buy some PVC pipe here that's long enough to go the full length of this cutout. And then you would have a bed still, you'd have all this storage and e much easier access underneath. And then you could cut these to height for whatever height works for you. So if you wanted more headroom, you cut the legs shorter. If you wanted more storage, you keep them longer. We don't use this setup because we didn't want to buy, see, you can't just use the legs because it would fall down. You'd have to buy longer PVC pipe to use this unless you had the seats way pulled up. But then it, in the middle of the night, we didn't want this falling in the hole. So let's talk about the pros and cons of this particular build out compared to the other one. I think the obvious is that this is more time consuming to set up but it provides a ton more storage. So if you have a lot of stuff you need to take, this would work much, much better. If you already have the seats in the back, you don't have to take them out. That, and that's a pain. Yeah, although our other setup, we could just fold them down. We just lose the storage in the well. Yeah, we didn't show that in the other video, but another option that we have used and we probably, we use quite a bit because we don't bring that much stuff is we just fold down the back seats and put the mattress down and then put the rest of the stuff on top of the folded back seats. That's actually worked out really well when we had to go pick up our son and things like that. Yeah, it works out fine if we don't have a lot of things that we're bringing with us. Overall, this build, a pretty huge advantage over a lot of the things that we've seen on YouTube is that it's very inexpensive. It's super easy to set up and it doesn't require any building skills. The most thing you're going to need, and you can actually get the wood cut at Home Depot or at Lowe's, you just need like a little handsaw to cut the legs and that's it. I believe that they'll do three cuts for you for free. I think that's right. And to cut the PVC, I used a compound miter saw with a plastic blade. I also sanded the edges of the plywood so that handling it, getting it in and out of the car, wouldn't um, get any splinters or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Or scratch up my mattress, put splinters in the mattress, scratch up your seats in the bag. I had already said earlier in the video that we don't, uh, we don't generally do this one, but it was the first one that we did. Yeah, th there's also a slightly different third option that we don't personally use it but it could be a good option for you so hopefully you found this video helpful if so like and subscribe join us on our adventures and some of our educational material but our last video people seem to really find that helpful so we're so glad and you know it's something we really do we've used it many 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 times and this is not as convenient it's not something we use as much we actually toyed around with this as our setup if we had shipped this car to europe We've decided we're not going to take the car, right? That's the plan? That's the plan for now. <laughs> Who knows what will happen? We're always changing. Pivot. <laughs> I don't know if that's that.